everyone. We want to welcome you today to the We Are Floor Pearl podcast. I am your host, Latasha J. Humphrey, founder of the Floor Pearl Foundation Incorporated. I am super pumped to get into the podcast today. But before we get started, we want to let our audience know that this podcast is being brought to you by the Floor Pearl Foundation, where our vision is bridging the gap, building a legacy. Our mission is that we are a 501c3 community focused nonprofit mentoring organization building healthy relationships and partnerships between women and girls through education education, community service, networking, unification, and career planning. Our inspiration is Flora Pearl Humphrey. She is my paternal grandmother who taught me a lot about faith, family, and community, which is where I get my inspiration from. Now, audience, I have the pleasure of introducing to each of you this beautiful gem who I've watched grow since we met about four and a half years ago. We met when she was in high school and she is now a senior at the University of Alabama. She is a part of my tribe and I just love who she is and who she is becoming. So without further ado, I present to you Courtney Dupree. Hi, Courtney. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? Doing awesome. It's such an honor to have you with us today. If you would, just go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. Well, I'm Courtney Dupree. I am 24 years old. I'm a senior at the University of Alabama, majoring in early childhood education. Um, I spent a lot of time working with uh, young kids and children and all in the community. And so um, I really love what the Floral Pearl Foundation is doing, and I'm here to offer up my um, my knowledge and my support. And so. Okay. Well, that's pretty awesome. And we're so um, just so glad that you are with us. And, you know, as you know, the Flora Pearl Foundation is big on creating and building healthy partnerships and relationships, of course, between women and girls. And we believe, you know, in building those strong support systems so that young girls and young women like yourself, you know, will have that support. Um, if you would just tell me, you know, when you hear support system, Courtney, what does that mean to you? Uh, when, when I hear a support system, I automatically think of the people I'm surrounded by daily. Um, I look at them as my support system, like my family, my close girlfriends. Um, and those are just the people who you can lean on for emotional support. Uh, those are people you share with. So when anything is going wrong, they know, okay, I know this person because we've shared this connection. And this is the way I can offer up my advice to help them. Okay. And how do you feel like we can create, you know, those effective and efficient support systems for women and girls? Um, I think allowing women and girls to have an open platform to share their experiences with each other is very important. I feel like that's a beginning start. Uh, it's really hard to seek advice or uh, support from those that you don't so you have a strong connection or relationship with. So I think once we've established like a sense of security and belongingness amongst women and girls, then we can begin to like change their lives. I feel like it's, like I said, it's, it's hard to open up to someone when you haven't developed that relationship yet. And um, so that's one thing I, uh, I believe that we can do to create um, effective and efficient support systems. Just Keeping an open line of communication amongst women and girls, having women and girls be able to respect each other's opinions and differences, because that is a problem with um, our generation is now. There's just a difference of views and opinions, and we just have to be more open and willing to listen to others, even if their opinions are different than ours. Okay. All right. No, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's very good. And, you know, you are about to graduate from college. And so I also wanted to ask you, you know, even on the heels of that, like you were saying, just, um, just building and, and being open and, and willing to have those conversations and willing to, you know, just support one another. How, um, how important is it for you to have a healthy network, you know, um, as you move forward? Because there is a transition period, you know, even right. from when you graduate, you know, a lot of times we think, you know, support system may be from just going from 
high school to college. But when you're transitioning even out of college, you know, that network as you begin to move into that career, uh, you know, your career and what, what you're wanting to do for a while, how, how about a healthy network? Like how, is, how important is that to you? Oh, it's extremely important. Um, I have a mother and an older sister who I look up to, but I also do have my close girlfriends who I have some I've been friends with um, just from the beginning of college, but others I've been friends with since high school, and they've been around me for some of the biggest moments of my life, um, some of the victories and some of the defeats. And um, having people around you who you can cry on their shoulder, they're willing to listen to you, they're willing to offer you advice, even whether it's like, hey, you don't, you don't look cute today, like, let me help you with your <laughs> Right. That means a lot. Right, right. <laughs> that was a relationship that really means a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that you have somebody who's literally and figuratively willing to give you the shirt off their back. And um, mm. it's really helped me to... Uh, grow and develop as the years have gone on it's made us stronger being able to connect to each other and um share our experiences as we've gotten older and um it just made me very more appreciative of what others have to offer in a relationship um just knowing that this is important to me but it's not only important to me it's important to them as well and they want to continue to strengthen our relationships yeah, yeah, that that is super, um, super cool to to have that type of support. And like you said, for those people even being able to share just in, in whether, you know, it's a victory or, or what you may consider to be a defeat, you know, um, and just offering that that support to you. So um, I, I totally agree, you know, with you on that. And um, I just I wanted to segue a bit into you know, as it relates to community service, you know, um, we, we are starting the new addition uh, to the Floor Pro legacy of our junior board of advisors. And so we are so proud that you have, um, you've decided to serve as the president of that branch of the vision. And I wanted to know, you know, what made you want to serve in that position? Well, to be completely honest, I was nervous when I was first presented with the opportunity because I automatically doubted myself and I said, hmm, I don't know if I'm qualified to do this, but um, I had to get over that because it really felt right. It came at the perfect, the opportunity came at the perfect time um, uh, based on where I am in life. Um, I am about to, like you said, transition into another phase of life after graduation. And to take on this leadership role, it's allowed me to strengthen my faith in God because I have to rely more on Him, not just myself, because this is something new to me. Being a president of a junior board advisor, that's new to me. And I have people who are looking, who are going to be looking to me as a model, as um, a mentor, and as a leader. And so where I lack, I know God can come in, and, you know, He can... He can supply me with the need, with all my needs. He can tell me what to say. He he can order my steps so that I'm doing the right thing for these girls. And um, I just knew that this is what I needed. Like, I needed, this is kind of like a breath of fresh air for me to be able to um, share and to be able to pour into the lives of others however, I, however I'm supposed to be used, you know, in this organization, but um, it was something that I knew I had to accept. It, there wasn't any doubt about it. I, like I said, I was nervous, but there, there was no doubt that I was going to do this. Yeah. It's kind of like, when you have the opportunity to make a difference and you feel like God is pulling on your heart, I had to accept. Yeah. I, want God, I wanted God to use me. Yeah, no, that's awesome, Courtney. And if you would, you know, just share with our audience more about, you know, the different ways, even outside of, uh, you know, being the president of the junior board, uh, just share them with different ways that you've served as it relates to community service. Um, Well, community service, like, it's always been very important to my family as a whole because I can remember as a child, um, we would gather up our clothes that we weren't wearing anymore or 
um, that we just wanted to give away, and we would give those to a less fortunate. Um, and this was just my parents' way of teaching us how important it is to give back. Because we didn't get everything we wanted as kids, but we always had everything we needed. Mm. And that's always made me have an inner desire to help those who don't have any basic needs met every day. Um, whether they have a lack of food, um, so they need someone to serve food at the homeless shelter, or even giving toiletry items or clothing. Um, those things are things that we kind of take for granted, I feel like, some days. Um, we wake up, we know we're going to go and eat food in the kitchen, we know we're going to put some clothes on our back, but some people don't have that. So at a young age, I knew you have to be willing to help those who are in need. And um, as I worked in school, I was cheered from middle school to high school, and through that, we did community service every year. We did it year-round, and um, we participated in several community service um, outings, um, we did build house, help build houses for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we ran uh, the 5K for Race for the Cure. And um, we actually um, seasonally served as Jimmy Hill Mission as well. Um, some girls did that separately. But that was just, some, like, those things have kept me knowing in my mind, okay, life, yeah, I have my life. I have things that I do every day. But to care about someone else, to give to someone else, to pour into your community, that's so much more rewarding than me just doing my everyday thing. Like, I can remember even um, around Christmas time, we had so much leftover food, and all I wanted to do, I couldn't wait to go out to just give it away to uh, the men on the street. And they were so appreciative. Like, that made me feel so good. And I took it as, you know, this is just something that I do. Like, I took it as something that I, it's just instilled in me to do, to give back. But the way it changed their lives, that that meant so much more to me than how I felt about myself for doing something right. You know, like, right. you know, like, you know that person probably woke up this morning thinking they weren't going to eat. But mm. look where I am. Like, I was able to do that, so I did it. And I thought that more people, you know, saw what they could do and actually did that. Right. And we would have so much more unity within our community and there would be so much more help um, given out to those in need. Right. Right. No, I totally agree. <laughs> if we would only, you know, focus in on that, what we could do, you know, and the solutions really and what well, is started, you know, where you are and what you can do and not necessarily depending on what somebody else can do. It really is you starting with where you are. So you're I mean, you're absolutely correct on that, you know. So, you know, and and basically, you know. With that, I, I wanted to know kind of um, as it relates to even when you talk about just generations, period, or just, you know, what we can do or what are the different things we can do. Um, I have a question with you, you know, well, for you about the generational divide. Um, do you believe that there is one, you know, within our community? Yes, I definitely do. Okay. Um, How so? I understand on that. Um, I think that the our my gen of the millennials and like the older generations, um I feel like a lot of times the younger generation and the older generation we all want to be heard and we feel like we can't be heard. We feel like we're not heard and or under or even understood. And I can speak from um a place of a twenty four year old. I sometimes found myself um, keeping my mouth closed more than speaking up and being honest about how I feel about something just because someone from an older generation has made me to feel as though whatever I have to say doesn't matter and isn't important because I don't know. But I feel like that's the problem because what I do know might change what you know. And mm. if we have that open line of communication amongst each other and we can actually talk about it, then there, you might know that. I mean, like, I, could, I might be able to teach someone way older than me something vice versa. Like, it's like, it should be a give and take more so than a, you have to listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. 
And I just think there's a big um, misunderstanding and a lot of people walking around as if they, they know it all. But we have to come to we have to come to a crossroads where we're just like, you know what, we're going to try to collaborate. We're going to share ideas. We're going to share beliefs. We're going to share our values. Because if we don't do that, it's kind of like we're really not trying to teach the younger generations anything. We're just trying to tell them what's been going on and how this worked or how this didn't work. But we have to be able to teach. Like the world is constantly evolving. Things are constantly changing. There's something new on a social on social media every day mm-hmm. that's taking attention from people, like taking attention from um, relationships. Yeah, we're spending more time on our phones and things that we're not even having these face to face conversations with our older peers. We don't really at this point we don't really care what they have to say because they don't they're not on social media like us. They're not connected like we are. But we got to get over that because, like I said, there's still so much to be learned from them. And vice versa. Right. Right. And so basically, do you, you know, how do you feel like we can create those atmospheres for that to happen? Yeah, there just has to be, um, we have to be focused on, like, creating a positive connection with each other. Um, Like like I said, we just have to be open to uh, the idea of sharing ideas and keeping that line of communication. Um, because you really can't settle conflict without communicating. Yeah. And I think, of, like, I've seen in even my relationship with some older people in my family or something, like, kind of like we shut down. We don't even want to talk anymore. Mm. We just walk around with a chip on our shoulder, and we are mis- we feel like we're misunderstood. We feel like nobody cares. No one's listening. But sometimes it takes stepping out of how you already feel or the notion you have about somebody or something or whatever the situation is and saying, okay, I know that this is what it looks like, but what can I do to make sure it doesn't pan out the way it looks like it's about to? Mm. Or like maybe that means this person probably isn't going to listen to me. They don't understand what's going on right now, but let me sit down with them. Let me talk to them about what's going on. Let me share because, like I said, they might be misinformed. It might be a huge misunderstanding, but without that communication, there is no way to solve it. And um, I think that the growth happens when you can step out of what you already know and learn something new. Right. So if we, get, if we can get out of, like, the whole mindset of we got it all figured out, no one can teach us anything, we can start to learn. We can start to bridge that gap. We can come together and we can make a change together as women of all ages. Right, right. And and even what you're saying, you know, even with that, you I know you were talking earlier about, you know, your support system. And so I wanted to segue into, you know, the mother daughter bond. And, and really, you know, that has a lot to do with, you know, like you, what I hear you saying a, a lot is about that communication, about, you know, having those lines open, you know, being willing to listen, you know, and really not necessarily want to be right. Um, But being willing to be taught, you know, um, it's not about because if we don't to me, if we it's it's not for you to win and I lose, we both lose if it's not helping us move forward. So it's not a I won, you know, and then the other person is like they didn't No, I mean, if we can't win together, then we both lose, you know. And so, you know, the mother-daughter bond is very important to, you know, the Flora Pearl Foundation. And um, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, how how did your relationship with your mother prepare you to become the woman that you are today? Um, well, I feel like uh, my mom has she instilled a sense of determination within me. And um, she's taught me definitely to work hard for all the things I want in life. Um, we've been, we've always been close. As I've gotten older, things have kind of changed because there is that, um, there is that issue. <laughs> there is that issue, i am be honest, of uh, me trying to grow on my own and her wanting to, you know, still be my mom, fully hands-on and, direct me and lead my steps, but um, we're working on that. We really are because she's taught me that I am capable of doing 
anything that I put my mind to. Mm-hmm. And with that, that has that that's gone with me throughout my years. So now, as I'm entering a, about to enter a new stage in life, where I really can go and find a job and really do something that I dreamed of doing, she's taught me that. And so now I'm like, I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm wanting to do that. And she's always um. She's always loved me unconditionally mm-hmm. and uh, taught me to put our fam- like put the family first. Um, and I know, like, watching her as a mo- wife, as a mother, I know that I really don't have to depend on man for anything because I've seen her struggle. I've seen a struggle as a family. I've seen her not be able to rely on her husband or with my dad I've seen her really do things on her own and that's that's really helped me because I um I look to her for assurance but I know that like I can go I go to God first I've seen her pouring out to God pouring her heart out to God for help and um I think that's the biggest thing that's helped me to know, like, to become a woman, because I'm not going to have it all figured out, like, there, she couldn't have given me a rule book, and I still do everything right, like, that, that's not going to happen, but the fact that she has instilled so many um, good qualities in me, that's helped me to know, like, look, I'm not going to have it all figured out, I have these good morals and these values, they're here when I need them. But at the end of the day, like, if I have God to turn to when I'm confused, then I'm good. And I thought that's probably the biggest thing you can teach anyone, whether it be a mother-daughter relationship, father-son, whatever. So just rely on God because we're, like, she's not, my mom isn't perfect. She's not always going to do quote-unquote right things. But I know that she's taught me that. She's taught me that she's not perfect. She, she's shown me that she's not perfect. She's been very transparent with me. She's been open with me about things that she needed to tell me so I can understand her better, so I can understand why she's made some of the choices she's made. And that's helped me to understand, you know what, Courtney, like, you got to navigate through this life. You got these keys to success, but things may come your way. You just have to, you got to be able to, like I said, rely on God and um, so you can move forward. Right, right. And what would you, I mean, you know, even at this time, because you and your mom, you all have a, a pretty good relationship. And like you said, no, it, it may not be perfect, but there are certain things that she instilled in you. What would you say to a mother to encourage her, you know, in this situation, like, you know, and being a mom? And the reason why I say that is because, you know, coming from a daughter, maybe to encourage her, she is having a challenge with relating to her daughter. What would you say to encourage a mother? Um, I would, I would tell moms to be transparent with their daughters. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing because sometimes, um, especially the younger generations and there is so, there's so much in the world, like so much sin and just, there are a lot of things that are distractions to us and Mom isn't always going to be able to be there. Mom isn't always going to be able to uh, hold your hand or to keep you safe. But by telling your daughter, hey, you know what? This happened to me. Maybe you should take this route because I don't want it to happen to you. Um, That can help strengthen your relationship. And because a lot of times we look at our moms as though they're super women. Like, they do no wrong. They're perfect. And sometimes it can be really heartbreaking when you find out, oh, man, my mama did this. Like, what? Why she didn't tell me? You know, you feel like, why didn't she tell me? Uh-huh. Like, I'm going to understand when this happened to me, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like if, if you can be transparent with your daughter and let them know this is really what it is, I, I went through this, but look where I'm at now. Like, look at the change I'm making. Look at the example I'm trying to be for you. That helps to create that relationship. That helps to keep that openness. And it really instills a sense of trust. I It's 
very hard to open up to somebody that you feel like you cannot trust. And even if that is your mom or somebody you're very close to, like, that doesn't mean you're going to always want to tell them things. That doesn't mean you're going to always want to share with them. Or, but developing that trust and, like, I'm telling you, just being transparent and open, that goes a whole nine yards. If that was a time where I wouldn't even want to talk to my mom about my relationship just because she didn't talk to me about her relationship. Mm. It wasn't until I, I had those conversations with her. I was like, hmm, maybe this is the person I'm going to seek for this advice next time. Maybe I'm not going to go to my, my girlfriend over here who has only had a boyfriend for a month and doesn't really know anything. Maybe I'm going to go to somebody who really can give me some stern advice. Right. But it took her really, it really took her making me feel comfortable to do that. And um, she didn't come to me as though she was my authority figure or as though I was going to get in trouble for telling her this. I, she never made me feel as if I would be condemned for being honest. Mm. And that's important too because no one's going to open up to you if they feel like you're going to look at them and judge them or you're going to think differently of them. They want to know that it's safe. They want to have that safe zone. They want to feel that um, belongingness in your life. To know right. that we, have, we share this common thing, that, that means a lot to a child. So I think just being open and um, transparent with your child, your daughter, that, uh, that goes a long way. Okay. And in turn, kind of on the flip side then, you know, what would you share with a, a daughter, you know, as it relates to mom? Um, I would say um, to be very, I would say to be respectful, to um, trust that your mom wants your best interest, I mean, has your best interest at heart, and um, to not, not just rely solely on her advice, but use your own brain. Um, like, be smart about the decisions you're making because even though your your mom can help you all the way, all day, but the decisions you make for yourself will take you somewhere or, or they won't take you somewhere. And so you have to be, um, you have to be able to listen, but also be, uh, be smart enough to do what's best for yourself. And not that, don't always feel as though um, you have to do as I'm saying, I'm speaking from someone who is 24 and about to graduate college and has had jobs and paid pay bills before. So, so I'm not going to say necessarily for the younger girls, but for you know, someone in their teens who is trying to get into adulthood as a woman, and I would say definitely to um, trust yourself, but seek advice from your mom. Don't be afraid to talk to your mom. Don't be afraid to tell her things because sometimes your mom may feel that fear. It's not always the daughter who feels fear of coming to the mom. Sometimes the mom feels fear coming to the daughter. And because your mom doesn't want to let you down. Like, that is her biggest thing. She does not want to let her child down. So sometimes you have to open up that line of communication. I know for a fact I've had to sometimes come to my mom and be like, hey, this is bothering me. What can we do to make this better? And she's appreciated that. She's, she's seen the growth in me just for me being able to speak to her and in a respectful way, but let her know, like, these are these are things that are going on with me, and in order for me to grow, I need you to, you know, kind of get on board with it. And that's how strength in our relationship as well. You just have to, like I said, the communication is so important between a mother and a daughter and so many lines, because so many lines could be crossed um, if um, you don't have that. I'm sorry, I, my mind just went blank. But, <laughs> yeah, basically, like I said, the communication just has to be there from both parties. There has to be it's a give and take in any relationship. That is good. That's good. Good, good advice. Good sage advice is what I call it. And um, <laughs> as we uh, want to segue into the, you know, dealing with your faith and um, I just wanted you to share, you know, with us how important, you know, is your faith? And I guess in a way you've kind of talked about that. So, 
you know, um, as far as in your decision making, you really have talked about that. So if you would just share with us, you know, a time when your faith was tested and, and you know, and how you came through it to encourage someone. Mm-hmm. 
Sometimes he has to shake us. Like sometimes he has to remind us, "Hey, I am here. I'm I'm here for you. I'm devoted. Like I I live within you. I need you to do the same for me. Like I need you to devote yourself to me." Mm. And that's why when tests and trials come, I'm I'm ready. Like I'm happy for them more so than sad or scared or nervous because it's like dang, this is one more way for me to show God, like, I'm here for it. Like, I got faith in him. I know he's going to work it out for me. And it's also to show others around me. They're like, how is this girl going to get out of this? Look, guess what I got on my side? Like, I have God. It's I like, know, right? <laughs> it's really a beautiful thing in the whole just to know that you don't have to do it all on your own. Like, there is someone who is there, who has created you, who knows your purpose, and he's going to guide you as long as you let him. Wow. That's awesome, Courtney. Oh, man. You've encouraged me today. <laughs> um, even more. And so um, we are going to get into um, our closing segment, uh, which is what we call Matters of the Heart Moment. Um, and um, if you had an opportunity to speak to your four-year-old self, what would you say to her? Um, I... I think I would tell a four-year-old Courtney to um, honestly just appreciate the time that I have here, and um, especially with my family. Um, just because I lost my dad in 2014, he, um, sometimes I do sit back and I I think about the times we did share, but I think about the times when... I wasn't there, I didn't come home, or I missed out on um, that holiday, and things like that. Um, I would tell myself to definitely appreciate my relationships and not take them for granted because I think that we uh, come in contact with, definitely come in contact with people seasonally, but some people are, were meant to be there for, for longer than a season. And so just to distinguish those relationships and um, really pour into them while I have the time because I feel like relationships are so important the way you treat people and how you can uh, affect others lives that's so much more important than whatever I can accomplish little goal I can accomplish like getting a job or making money like those things come and go but like you know how you treat people and how people remember you that means so much so I would really tell four-year-old Courtney to just focus on that and um you know just don't limit yourself to um where you can go in life um surround yourself with positive influences and um just like I said stay close to God and um not be afraid just not be afraid to um take life by the horns and just live, live to the, live your life to the fullest. I would tell Courtney to live her life to the fullest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And who motivates you? Oh, uh, okay. I would love to say that there are so many people in my life and they motivate me. And there are, but I think that I motivate myself the most just because, um, I want to make others happy. I want to make them proud of me. But as I wake up each day, I know, like, that I have to be the one to make the best out of my day. Mm. Like, no one can do what I can do that day for myself. I have to do that. And um, just staying focused on, like, what my purpose is or the purpose I feel like God placed on my heart, um, that helps me. Um, Believing... uh, Believing in myself um, helps to motivate me. Um, just knowing that, you know, I things may not, I might have woke up this morning and I'm tired and I feel like I have a, such a busy schedule, so much to do, not enough time today to accomplish it. But look, I, like, this life is my life to live. Like, if I really want to live out, like I said, the purpose that I feel like God has placed in my heart, I have to be that one to say, you know what, Courtney, like, you're going to get through this. You're going to make it. You're going to make it to the end of the day. You're going to have all your things accomplished. And I, I like, I really have to be that driving force for myself. Um, it's just really hard. Like I said, it's really hard 
to just have others around you constantly saying, you got it, you can do it, if you don't truly believe that for your own self. Um, there just has to be like a burning desire in your own heart to want more out of yourself. And if you don't do that, it's kind of like, you know, you're just always going to be living life trying to feed off of others. And you want to be able to wake up and say, hmm, I, I feel this in myself. I, I'm motivated to do great because I know I can, because I have done it. And that energy flows to others. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's really hard to, um, if you can't motivate yourself, it's hard to motivate others. Mm. You can't really tell someone how to do something if you don't do it yourself. You have to be that teacher. You have to show them, look, I didn't want to do this, but I made, oh, I got myself up. I got myself together to do that. You can do it too for yourself. Like you can, you can want more for yourself as well. Right. Right. Well, good. And so what last minute piece of advice do you have for our audience today? Uh, I say, um, just keep God first in all that you do and um, allow him to work in your life and use you. Um, like I said earlier, we um, we like to think we have it all figured out and we know everything, but I can speak from a place of experience when I didn't know what to do and instead of acting on my uncertainty, I prayed about it and rested and it allowed God to come in my life and just do the unthinkable. So my uh, my last minute of, of advice is definitely to just keep God first and um, stay focused on the plan He has for you. Even if you don't know all the steps, we're like sometimes we're not supposed to have it all figured out right then and there. Sometimes that'll mess us up. So just uh, rest in the uncertainty and trust that He wants the best for you in your life. And um, I feel like that's the easiest way to navigate through this life because it is hard. There will be tests. There will be trials. But um, as long as he's living within you, as long as you're focused on him, as long as you're trying to continue to develop and grow their relationship with him, um, all your other relationships will flourish, whether it be with your mom and your daughter or your friends, all your relationships will flourish when you have your relationship with God, right? All right. Well, Courtney, we want to thank you so much for being with us today and sharing with us. So thank you. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. And our goal at the Flora Pearl Foundation is to be a blessing to all of those we come in contact with by operating with the spirit of excellence. We want to thank you all for listening today. And you can visit our website at www.floraperlfoundation.org. We look forward to spending time with you all each week. We'll talk to you soon.